This is the aftermath of one of the worst massacres in an ongoing conflict between the Anglophone minority and Francophone-dominated government in Cameroon. A bilingual academy attacked by unknown assailants, killing seven children and injuring a dozen more. But it's not the only such attack. Children, teachers, and school buildings have been targeted by separatists and by the Cameroonian government. Newsine Bellingcat, working with human rights monitors, used open source material and interviews with both sources on the ground and in the diaspora to investigate attacks against not only the region's school system, but an entire generation of Cameroonian children. Cameroon can be divided into two distinct areas the French-speaking or Francophone region in the east and the English-speaking or Anglophone region in the west. While both are supposed to have equal status under the nation's constitution, the Francophones have dominated Cameroon's political landscape since the country gained independence 60 years ago. In 2016, Anglophone lawyers, students, and teachers in the western part took to the streets to protest their lack of representation in Francophone-dominated courts and schools. Because the government wants to change the way of education. All the things are going on in, in the Francophone way. It's time that Anglophones stand up and fight for what belongs to them. No violence! No violence! No violence! Protests escalated in 2017 when Anglophone separatist groups unilaterally declared independence. We shall in addition to violently clashing with the Cameroonian military, these separatists have imposed weekly ghost town days, boycotting schools and businesses in hopes of pressuring the Cameroonian government to come to the negotiating table. If there is a meaningful blanket boycott, not attacking schools, not burning down schools, a blanket boycott where every school is actually shut down, it will compel the state to come to the table as soon as possible. As armed groups began enforcing the school boycott and Cameroonian military forces moved into the region to crush any armed resistance, schools found themselves caught in the middle, and it became increasingly dangerous for children and teachers to attend school, especially in rural areas. As of 2019, the Global Education Cluster said that four out of every five schools in the Anglophone region was closed due to the conflict. Working with our partners at Bellingcat and using satellite imagery and social media posts, Newsy has been able to geolocate numerous incidents targeting schools or students and teachers throughout Cameroon's Anglophone regions. These include schools being lit ablaze, armed raids and kidnappings, and the Kumba massacre where seven children were killed. Some of this was perpetrated by the Cameroon government, some of it by various separatist groups. A conflict like this one of the most underreported in the world is rife with disinformation. But with open source reporting, we can verify where and when these events took place. In many instances we examined, the affiliation of the group responsible for a school burning is difficult to determine. Jesus Christ. This was the case for a school burning in 2020, where students and teachers were forced by unidentified assailants to strip and flee the campus. However, we were able to confirm the location, Kulu Memorial College in southwest Cameroon, near the city of Limbe. In other instances, we can determine the likely affiliation of the group in the video, but not exactly whether they're responsible for the burning. This 2019 video was shot in a small town called Eka. In it, you can see men in military uniforms resembling those of Cameroon's government standing in front of a burning school. Pro-government media claims separatists were storing arms in the school. Beyond the arson attacks, children and teachers violating the school boycott imposed by separatists risk being kidnapped or threatened by armed groups. In 2018, 79 students were kidnapped from the Presbyterian Secondary School in Nequin, this location here. They were released three days later. According to the students, the goal was to intimidate them so they would no longer attend school. A teacher who is currently out of work because of the boycott told us that he has to walk a thin line between separatists enforcing the boycott and government troops. For his protection, we're not using his voice. The first problem we are facing is with the AMBA boys. Anybody who attempts to go to school, a government school, that person is in trouble. The second thing is that even the government forces themselves, they target us. 
On top of that, there are also criminal groups with no clear affiliation who we've been told have taken advantage of the situation to extort teachers and students. The boycott on government-run schools being enforced by English-speaking separatists started out as an attempt to bring the government to the negotiating table, but has dragged on and, in some cases, created a dangerous environment for both teachers and students. Perhaps at a time school boycott was good, but school boycott cannot run for long. And um, you cannot sacrifice the well-being of kids for political reasons. Barrister Felix Agbor Nkongho is the founder and president of the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa. He led peaceful protests early on in the conflict, before he was arrested and imprisoned for eight months by the Cameroonian government. So we, we are perpetuating um, a vicious cycle of poverty, of, of underprivilegedness in such a way that the kids who cannot afford an education because their parents did not afford an education, they'll end up being the, the, the lowest of, of, of the society. For those children who cannot go to school because they've given us an educational system that is a liability, fight for your country. Cho Ayaba is the leader of one of the two main separatist political bodies, the Ambazonia Governing Council. He's also the leader of its military wing. He told us that kids could go to school, but only if it was in territory under their control. We are defending uh, our independence, and I don't think you would want a foreign curriculum of education to be imposed within your own country. The enemy must withdraw from our country and let us set up our own institutions to oversee our educational system. The boycott has forced many students to choose between an education or the threat of violence if their school is targeted by any of the myriad groups wanting to uphold the boycott. We know basically that there, there would be a lapse. This generation is paying a price for the next generation to have you know, a better future. That's what has happened in every country that has fought for their freedom. There's still a long way to go in ensuring a safe education for Cameroon's children, especially with attacks like the Kumba massacre still threatening students. The mere threat that something might happen sent these children in Limbe fleeing from schools last year, shortly after the massacre took place. Actually restoring the system to the levels of schooling they had before the crisis is going to take a lot more time. Um, some of the areas are insecure and have been abandoned for like three, four, five years, and it's difficult without massive investment to get schools there going again.